In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to map the W, A, S and D keys and the left analog stick of a controller to the player's movement using the new Unity input system. As you can see, I have a little square sprite representing our player and I am providing input using a PlayStation 5 controller. We can also see this working with W, A, S and D input from our keyboard. So without the way, let's get started. So to begin getting our input system set up, we're going to import the new Unity system by going to the package manager, switching this to the Unity registry, and then scrolling down to the input system. Here we are, input system 1.4.4. We're going to press install and wait for this to load as it's going to download and install it into my project. As you can see, we're now unpacking the package and it's compiling all of the scripts required for it. Now, when we change our input system to the new Unity input system, we will have to restart the editor. We can just press yes and it will do this automatically for us. So now we're back into the Unity editor. We can switch the package view to in project and we can see that the input system is installed. We can close the package manager and we're ready to get started creating our input controls. So to begin with, we're going to go to our project view. We're going to go assets and in this folder import, I'm going to right click, go create. And at the bottom, we have the input actions. I'm going to click this. I'm going to rename it to custom input. We're going to double click it to open up the input action window. Now to start with, we're going to press the plus icon. And we're going to create a new action map. I'm going to rename this to player. And by default, we have a new action set up for us. I'm going to rename this to movement. I'm going to click the drop down. I'm going to remove this empty binding. So on our movement action, we're going to go over to the action type. I'm going to change the button to value and then the control type from button to vector two. This is because our movement works on a vector two variable as our X value will be our horizontal axis and our Y value will be our vertical axis. So now that we have our movement action set up, we can click this little plus icon and add an up, down, left, right composite binding. This will create a 2D vector binding, which is perfect for our input movement. And I'm going to rename this to the type of input that we're going to be binding to it. So for this, it will be W, A, S and D. Classic WASD movement. So for up, we're going to set the path to keyboard and then the W key on the keyboard. For down, we're going to do S and S key and left, we can do the A key. And then finally, right, we can set to the D key. And the beauty of this system is we can also do the arrow keys in the exact same way. So by creating a new binding, I'm going to create the arrow keys. And then for up, we can do the up arrow. Down will be the down arrow, left will be the left arrow, and finally right will be the right arrow. And then we have our arrow keys set up as well. And then finally, we can go on to another up, down, left, right composite. I'm going to call this controller left analog. And then for the up binding, we're going to, instead of going to keyboard, we're going to go back and we're going to go game pad. And then we're going to go down to the left stick and we're going to do up. And then we're going to do this for each direction. Left stick down, left stick left, left stick right. And now for our movement action, we have WAS and D, the arrow keys and a controller left analog stick as input set up. So to commit this, we're going to click the save asset. And this will save our input into our custom input file and we can close this window. Now to be able to use this class inside of code, we need to click the generate C sharp class tick box. So by ticking this and pressing apply, this will generate a custom input C sharp script. As you can see, the Unity editor is now recompiling because we have a new script and this will allow us to be able to access our inputs in C sharp code.
So let's get started on mapping our custom input to our actual player and get some movement going. So if we go to the scripts folder, I'm going to create a new C sharp script. I'm going to call this player movement. And I'm going to go open this up in Visual Studio. So to begin with, we're going to remove the update and start functions that come standard in our class. And we're going to create a private custom input variable. I'm going to name this import. I'm going to set it to null by default. I'm then going to create an awake method, an on enable method, and an on disable method. Now we need to set up our input variable by actually giving it a value. So I'm going to do input equals new custom input parentheses and then a colon. And then to enable the input, we have to do import dot enable. And then to disable it, we do input dot disable. And we put these on the in the on enable and on disable functions. So when the game object is enabled, we enable the input. And when the game object is disabled, we disable the input. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to create the function that will be called when we provide input. So I'm going to create a new private void and we're going to call this on movement performed. Now we need to subscribe to the action that we created in our action map in our on enable function. So to do this, we're going to do input dot player, which is what we named our action map dot movement, which is what we named our action. And then we want to register to the performed action, which is a type of system action, which is a part of the unity input system. So we're going to do plus equals, and then we're going to do on movement performed. And now we get an error. And that's because the function we're subscribing to the performed event is missing the parameter of type input action dot callback context, which is what contains the value we're inputting. So to fix this, we can just add input action dot callback context and give this variable name. I'm going to give it the name value. So there we have it. We have our on movement perform function subscribed to the movement action we set up earlier. And just to keep our code nice and clean, we're actually going to unsubscribe to the function in our on disable using the minus equals instead of the plus equals. And this is because the player movement script has no need of being subscribed to the movement performed event if the game object is disabled. So our next step is to create a function that's called when we're no longer providing any input so we can stop the player. So to begin with, we're going to create a new private void. I'm going to call this on movement cancelled, which will need the parameter input action dot call that callback context. I'm going to name it value like we did in our performed function. And now we need to subscribe to this in our on enable and on disable functions. So just like our movement performed, we're going to do input dot player dot movement. But instead of performed, we're going to register to the cancelled event. And we do plus equals and then on movement cancelled for the function we want to call when the movement event is actually cancelled. And then we want to copy this and paste it into our on disable and then just do a minus equals to unsubscribe. So now we're ready to start getting the input that we're providing and assigning it to a variable which we'll use to move our player. So to start with, I'm going to go back to the top. I'm going to create a new private vector2 variable. I'm going to name this our move vector. And by default, I'll set this to vector2.0. Now we want to assign the x and y value that we're inputting into this vector. So to do this, we go to our on movement performed function that we are calling through our input action map. And we're going to get the vector two value out of our input action dot callback context type. So to begin with, we're going to just write move vector equals value dot read value. And then inside the angle brackets, we need to specify 
the type of value we want to get. Now, when we set up our action map, we changed it from, I believe it was axis to a vector two. So we want to put a vector two inside of the brackets because that's what we want to read. And it's what we will be providing through this function. And in our on movement canceled function, we just want to set the move vector to vector 2.0. So when the player releases all keys and is providing no input, our move vector will be zero on the X and zero on the Y, which will stop our player from moving. So our next step is to actually see if this input is actually working correctly. So I'm going to create a fixed update function instead of an update function because later on we're going to be moving the player using a rigid body and we want to make sure all the physics calculations are done correctly so we're going to be using a fixed update so to test if this is working we're going to write a debug.log and i'm going to provide the move vector and then when we go back to unity and put in any input we should see the values being outputted in our console log so now we're just going to switch back to Unity. So to actually see this output log, we need to make sure we add the player movement component to our player game object. And I'm going to press save and then press the play button. And we should see an output in our console log of our provided input. So as you can see at the moment, the X is zero and the Y is zero. And that's because I'm providing no input. But if I press the W key, we get a one value for our Y and the S key, we get a minus one. So we'll move in the opposite direction. And the same goes for A and D. We can see that they change on the X value. So to actually get this player set up and ready to actually be moved, we're gonna add a rigid body 2D component to the player. Now I'm gonna just set the gravity scale here to zero as I don't want gravity to be applied to my player so they fall off the screen. And I can see this if I now press play, the player should stay in place. Perfect. And then with that all set up, we can jump back into Visual Studio and actually start applying this move vector to the rigid body of our player to see the player move in the scene. So to begin with, we're going to remove this debug.log out of our fixed update. Now I'm going to go to the top of our script and I'm going to do another private variable, which will be our rigid body. I'll name this RB and I'll assign it to null. In our awake method, we're going to get a reference to the rigid body component on our player by do rigid body equals get component. And I'm going to search for the rigid body. Now I'm using a rigid body 2D. So I need to make sure I am getting the appropriate rigid body. Now, if we go to the top, we're also going to create another variable and this will be our move speed. So I'm going to make a float. I'm going to call it move speed. I'm going to assign it to 10. And then we're going to go to our fixed update and we're going to do rigid body dot velocity equals our movement vector multiplied by our move speed variable. And with this set up, we are now getting the input from our player and multiplying it by our speed and applying it to our rigid body. So the player should now move in our scene. So let's go back to Unity. So with everything already set up, we should just be able to press play and actually see the input moving our player in our game view. So if I press WAS and D, you can see that the player moves in the eight directions that we can provide with the keys we have. And if I grab my PlayStation 5 controller, we can see that we can also move the player using the left analog stick. However, we can only move in the eight directions as if we're doing WAS and D movement, where an analog should be able to provide smooth curves and arcs and differ the speed based on how hard we're pushing on the stick. So to fix this, what we're going to do is we're going to exit play mode, go to our custom input file and then go to the controller left analog and change the mode from digital normalized to analog. Then we're going to save the asset and then close the window. 
So when we press play, we should see the player move in the expected way when we use the analog stick. So as you can see, if we provide a little input, we only move a little bit, and we can get those sweeping curve arcs that we can't get using a WA S and D input. And likewise, the WA S and D still works in the same way, and we can easily switch between the two by just providing the input. So one of the nice things about this system is that we're only using these lines of code to do the input for both the WAS and D and the controller, which makes it much easier to expand to other different types of controller input in the future. If you found this video helpful, press the like button. And if you wish to see more Unity slash game dev tutorials, hit subscribe. It really helps motivate me to make more videos like this. But that's all for now. I'll see you in the next one.